Hi everyone, I'm Daniel Roth from the Blazor team. In this video, we're going to learn about building forms with Blazor. Forms are a way that users can submit data to your web application. You can use a form to run a search query, to add data to your database, or to edit existing data. In Blazor, you typically create forms using the built-in edit form component. Edit form makes it easy to create a web form that binds to a data model and can be validated. For example, let's look at some code. Here we have a page that lets us uh, add movies to a movie database. So we have a, a create form. And right there, we can see right away we have an edit form component uh, as part of this uh, component that's rendering a form. It will render a normal HTML form tag, but that's been nicely configured so that we can easily bind data to our data model which means you also need to specify a data model. So we have a model parameter to our edit form component. You can see that it's being uh, uh, passed in this movie instance. We're using a, a movie property as our data model, which is set up down here below. So there is the movie property. And you can see this movie property has this special attribute on it, this supply parameter from for, uh, form attribute. What this attribute does is it tells Blazor that when data is received in the request, that data should be bound, model bound, to this movie instance. So any data that comes in the request should show up in this movie object. And we're letting the edit form component know about that, that movie. Okay? And it's going to use that movie to track the state of the form. We also have this on valid submit uh, parameter, which is an event callback that the edit form will call when the form has been submitted and when that data is valid, when it's uh, been successfully validated. We'll talk more about uh, data validation in just a minute. We have to add a form name to our, uh, to our form in Blazor. Why do we have to do that? Well, if you have multiple forms on the page, then you need some way uh, to tell Blazor which form data should be bound to which model property. Like right now, we only have one form, so we only have you know, one movie instance that we're binding to. But if we had multiple of them, we could tell Blazor which form they're associated with by passing this form name parameter. So like, this is the create form. Uh, this would be redundant currently. It's not, not required because we just have one form, but you can always be explicit and that would be uh, totally fine. Okay, and then lastly, we have this enhance uh, uh, parameter, this enhance attribute. And what that's doing is that's turning on enhanced form handling for this form. When the form is submitted, Blazor will intercept that form request and uh, substitute a fetch request. And then when the form renders its response, Blazor will intelligently patch the, the response data uh, into the DOM. If you remember enhanced navigation from one of the earlier videos, this is very similar concept, but now just being done with form requests. Okay? Below, we have a whole bunch of built-in Blazor input components that we're using for all of our field inputs, like this input text component, input date, uh, and another input text, and then input number down below. So Blazor provides these convenient input uh, components that just render normal HTML inputs, but for each of the various data types that you might want to handle. And they can be then bound to your data model. Like you can see, uh, let me, do, let me do that. You can see here for this input text component, we are binding the value of the input text to our movie title uh, uh, property. Now, this is a new uh, uh, data binding syntax that you might not have seen before. This, is this at bind with a little dash in the middle. Uh, that's, it's very similar to when you used uh, at bind with a normal input uh, control, like an HTML input tag. But here we need to tell Blazor, well, which which parameter on this component do you actually want to do the binding to? And we want to bind to the, the value parameter of the input. Uh, so we, we use this dash value syntax in order to do that. So this input text component should be bound to the title property of our movie. Similarly, the date is bound to the release date of our, uh, uh, the input date is bound to the release date of our movies and, and so on. Now edit form will keep track of whether the inputs have been edited or not, so that it can then validate them. Now up above, you can see that we're using this data annotations validator component for our validation purposes. What does that do? Well, that means it will look at annotations, at attributes that are on our data model uh, type, and use those to determine what validation rules to run. So if we go look at our uh, movie class, 
Right now, it doesn't really have any of those annotations, but we could add some. Like on the title, we could say that a title is required. So that's setting up a, a validation rule just for that title property. Or maybe we want to say that for the price, you know, the prices can't be negative. So let's add a range uh, annotation here and say that the minimum has to be zero and maybe movies should never be more than $100 or something like that. Okay, so we've added some uh, validation annotations to our data model and the data uh, annotations validator will look for those annotations and then use them to determine what validation rules to run. We then have various ways that we can uh, display the, any validation errors. Up above, we have this validation summary component, which just displays a summary of all the errors. And then below, with, associated with each input, we have a validation message component. And these are, will display the uh, validation errors that are associated just with that one uh, input control, or just with that uh, one model property. You can see we're using this four uh, parameter to, to, to pass in a C-sharp expression that points to just the, the, the model property that uh, you want to display validation messages for in that case. All right, so let's, uh, let's give this a try. Let's go ahead and run this application. Okay, and then let's um, browse to our movies page at slash movies, and let's try and create a, a new movie. I uh, don't know. Let's, let's actually, let's just try submitting without any data at all and watch validation kick in. There it goes. Okay, so we see the, the validation summary up at the top saying, you know, hey, you, need, you, uh, you, you do specified, first of all, uh, something that's nonsensical for an actual release date. So it's detecting that this string isn't really uh, a date yet. We got to fix that. And then it's also running that required rule to say, hey, you need to specify a title before you can submit this form. All right, so we can start fixing that. Let's add a movie here, like Lab, Labyrinth. Uh, and then, what's, uh, I don't remember the release date for this movie. It's what, like July, I don't know, I'll just make that. Somewhere in the 80s, <laughs> 1987, I don't know. Uh, it was, uh, what was the genre for Labyrinth? It was weird, it was a weird movie. Uh, but I think it's, uh, I don't know, adventure. I guess it's called an adventure movie. And then uh, if we try and select uh, like a negative price, you know, pay us for, for uh, buying this movie, uh, you can see that we get the validation rule for our range also kicking in. Now, if I fix this, like let's say add uh, 10.99 for the price, you can see that the validation error currently still persists. Like it doesn't, it's not uh, updating interactively, running the validation rules interactively as I change the inputs. That's because by default, this component is, is just doing static server side rendering. If we want that interactive validation experience, we can do that too. We just need to enable an interactive render mode. So let's go over here and to our uh, create component and we'll add a render mode up here at the top. And for this, we'll use interactive server rendering. Okay, let's go ahead and restart that. And go back to our app. Okay, so now if I just try and submit without any uh, data, it's complaining that we don't have a, a title field. Let's add labyrinth again. And as I tab out, you can see that validation is run automatically. Now the component's interactive. It can respond to those client UI events and run validation as I'm changing the inputs. Okay. All right, cool. That was easy. We were able to quickly build a form using Blazor's built-in edit form component and the built-in input components. And we were able to validate our data and bind it to a data model. We were even able to make the form interactive so that it can uh, update validation as the user is typing. So that's the end of this video, and that's, that's actually the end of this series. Thank you for watching and learning all about Blazor. Your journey doesn't stop here, though. You can now head over to blazor.net, check out the docs for Blazor, and, and learn even more. There's also learning modules that you can find on the Microsoft Learn website that will get you going really fast with building more advanced Blazor applications using more advanced features. Again, thanks for watching and happy Blazoring.